Thanks for listening, and this is Mixtape Tonight. I'm your host, Mike Mixtape, and this is a brand new set of interviews just for you guys here on YouTube. Tonight, we have our first guest, and this is a YouTube channel that you guys should be checking out. She is... She started a cine club. It's a cine club channel. This is Maria. Hi, Mike. How you doing? Good. How about you? I'm pretty good. Pretty good. Really excited to be here. Awesome. Awesome. So on this talk show, we basically talk about your life, your influences. Oh, on... oh yeah. We're going back. We're, dipping, <laughs> we're digging deep into your life. Just people to know who you are. Uh, talk about your influences, your movies uh, and show taste and uh, leading up to now. So, uh, my first question, as I always ask my guests, is what is the mm -hmm. earliest memory that you could think of when it comes to movies, shows, or whatever? Oh my god. Wow. I feel like I should be lying down on a couch right now and, <laughs> and introspective. Let me see. Um, I can't, obviously it's not going to be accurate, but I have a very distinct memory of going to the movies to see The Lion King. And um, I, I'm pretty sure I saw it in Spanish because I'm from Puerto Rico. And um, normally kids' movies, they always bring a version that's dubbed. And But I just remember falling completely in love with it. I was so excited. I wanted to be a lion after that. I don't know if you've ever had that <laughs> after watching a Disney movie. You're like, yeah, I want to be a totally different species. It's totally cool. So, yeah, that's one of my first memories, I think, in the cinema. See, that's pretty cool because uh, The Lion King, for me, was a big movie in my life. Mm -hmm. So I just loved the hell out of it. And, okay, time just to cut to uh, recent events now. Are you excited for The Lion King remake? <laughs> I was literally going to ask you that. Uh, short answer, no. Not excited oh, at boy. all. Um, but I also don't want to be I also don't want to be negative uh, because I've been, a, I've been a known to like say things and then take them back. So, you know, who knows? But I also feel like it's such a masterpiece of a movie that I don't see what you can add or do better. I find that also sort of arrogant, you know, when you go and a movie that's so perfect and has touched so many people's lives, you can be like, oh, I can do something better about this. I find that somewhat arrogant. It's not always the case with any remake, but in this one, I'm like, ooh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not very sure. See, that's interesting because some people are mixed I mean, and, and right. of course, the debate is right now, it's like, is it live action or is it animation? It's like... Right, uh, who are we kidding? <laughs> it's like, oh, geez. I mean, I mean, clearly, it's photorealistic animals in anim mm -hmm. CG animation, but it looks live action to people, so... Mm -hmm. I mean, it gives people... I mean, Jon Favreau did a, did a great job with The Jungle Book, and I just feel like this could be a grand remake of it just it looks very much shot for shot too as well which i'm kind of interested to see how far so it goes so you're excited about it oh yeah okay cool oh yeah i've like i said i'm a diehard for lion king and just like i'm kind of curious how to see how it goes mm -hmm. especially uh because they brought back james earl jones to do mafasa which is interesting great of course it's like you can't like that casting is top notch but everyone else i'm just kind of curious how it goes with the voicing mm -hmm. In the acting. Yeah. It will be interesting. I think um, in terms of The Jungle Book, I was I, I really enjoyed it. But I also think The Jungle Book is a movie that was kind of plain, so to speak. You know, in terms of the time of Disney productions, they had to reuse a lot of animations. The story could... You can add more things to The Jungle Book. And I think that's fine. I, I don't... I can't imagine what you could do differently about... The Lion King to make it better, you know? Um, are we using the same score? Are we using the same songs? Is there even a point to recreating them? Like, that's sort of where I'm at. I'm not going to say it's bad because I haven't seen it. I don't know. Right. But, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I just, in general, I'm not really feeling Disney's let's remake everything that was great about us. And also sort of they're trying to do this thing where let's correct the mistakes we made in the past. And I just find it so apologetic and sort of unnecessary. I think we understand that there were plot holes in some movies that didn't really bother us. So there's no need sometimes to go back and make an entire production of it. I don't know. We'll see. It looks beautiful. That's for sure. Oh, yeah. Drop dead gorgeous. Um, so I'm kind of curious about that. Um, so 
What was the movie or show, uh, in that case, that got you into the world of filmmaking? Like, you watched the movie and you wanted to look at the behind the scenes footage of it and the commentaries and just dive deep into the world of that movie more. Hmm. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, early on, I would say Jurassic Park was very interesting. I was very young, but it's one of those movies that you keep going back to. And and I think, I don't know about you, but I think Jurassic Park holds up a lot. Like you see it today and you're like, wow, this is incredible still. So I was really interested, you know, in how they made the dinosaurs, how it was actually sometimes men in suits and in different costumes to do it. So I thought that was really interesting. I'm trying to think of something more recent that I fell in love with. I'll get back to you on that one. Okay. <laughs> uh, I will agree that uh, Jurassic Park still does hold up yeah, yes. all these years later. It's like, wow, this is breathtaking. Uh, my film was also Spielberg inspired in a way. Uh, he produced it, though. Uh, it mm -hmm. was Back to the Future for me. Oh, of course. A classic. That, th that film opened my eyes to film and I just dived right into the world of cinema because of that just like behind the scenes and everything it's just one of my yeah. favorite movies so that's what I truly enjoy um yeah okay so let's dive deep more into your life um <laughs> what is what okay going into school and college was there like any uh interest in pursuing a career in like film in a way it's funny that you mentioned that okay so all my whole life I wanted to be a writer and uh, but I do remember early on before I got into college I got an interview with a university and I don't remember at this moment who it was but it was something along film production or film writing something like I had an interview with someone and uh, yeah, they were very excited to have me. And I just, I, I don't know. I just thought, okay, that's, what am I going to do with that? And I never even looked at it again, but I've always loved movies since I was very small. And I've always been very interested in the side of uh, screenwriting for movies, you know, the dialogue. And I love movies where nothing happens, but the dialogue is so rich that you just are so immersed in it. So I think, yeah, from early on without really knowing it, I was very interested in movies. All right. All right. So uh, what what are you currently doing in your life right now after college and school? With What's your after, work? After college and school, I am a freelance writer and I am also an interpreter. I speak Spanish and English, so I do different freelance jobs uh, translating and interpreting for different companies. Ah. Yeah. Uh, cool, cool. Uh, let me turn back the clock even more because I forgot to mention so you grew up in puerto rico yes i did how was that experience going into watching films that's dubbed into a different language compared to like watching english language films well in puerto rico we are a u.s territory so we are required to learn english in school so that was also very common to watch movies in english but because there are children um, sorry, but just because they bring the family movies, they always dub those for children's just in case they're too young or they haven't learned yet. Um, but in my house, they always got me the movies. I had the whole Disney collection, but and I wanted all of my movies in English. I've never liked the idea of like listening to something that's not the original version. Um, I always try to find the most original version and I always learn all the movies in English. So there's always been a mixture, but my preference always was to hear them in English if they were an English-speaking movie. Okay. Yeah. Cool, cool. Uh, how long did you stay in Puerto Rico? Uh, let's see. I've, I've lived in Puerto Rico most of my life. I left for like a year to do my master's in Florida, and then I came back. That was, I don't know, 2013. And then... Around that time, I started my YouTube channel, and then I left about a year ago, two years ago, and I lived in Europe for a while, came back, and now I am in Colorado. Oh. So it's been a bit of everything. A little bit of everything. Yeah. Lots of traveling. That's good. That was actually a great segue, because let's talk about your venture into YouTube. <laughs> All right. Because you started your channel on November 1st, 2013. Yes. Uh, it's coming up to six years now, actually. Oh, boy. 
Um, so how, okay, what inspired you to, to create a YouTube channel? Okay, I was watching a lot of movies and I took a course in my master's degree about journalism and film. And it was basically a class where we watched movies and talked about them and I loved it. And from then on, I started getting into movie reviews on YouTube because I didn't know it was a thing. So I found Jeremy Jean and different other people. And uh, there was a group, I don't think, does, does SourceFed still exist? I don't think SourceFed still exists. Mm, I don't think so, no. All right. So Phil DeFranco had another YouTube channel. It was SourceFed and I loved everybody in that channel. And they had like movie reviews like once a week or once every two weeks. And I thought their opinions were good, but I was like, oh, I think I have something to add to this. So why not start a YouTube channel? And I did. And I started watching movies pretty regularly and tried to review them and find people in common that love movies as much as I did. Yeah. Um, started doing reviews. You did like, top number lists yes. uh, here and there. Um, I actually am scrolling through YouTube right now as oh, we God. speak. So I'm kind of like, like going somebody through... going through your closet. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much like um just looking through outtakes kind of flubs because when making videos you gotta flub up sometimes um, you do yeah um so did you learn how to make videos as you went along did you know the knowledge of how to set up a camera and audio and editing I knew enough because uh, while I was doing my degree and it was, I, d I did a master's in journalism, they wanted to teach us, you know, if you were going to be a reporter, this is how you use a camera, this is what you should do. So I did l know enough about editing and about video recording a bit before that, but you learn a lot as you go. I remember it took me so long to set up in the beginning to like edit, it just took forever and it, I didn't even understand how a four minute video could take me that long to make. So, I'm kind of curious, how was the, f okay, what was your experience with Sundance? Oh, Sundance was so fun. I love Sundance. I wish I could go back sometime soon. Um, I went to Sundance with um, Movie Pilot. I was writing for them at the time, and I think this was their first time going to Sundance, and they asked me. I'm not sure why, but I was incredibly grateful. They were like, yeah, do you want to go? You watch movies? You can write about them in our site. And I said, yes, of course. Let's do it. Never been to a movie festival before. And um, it was a lot of fun. I don't think I saw as many movies I, as I wanted to. It was impossible. But I met celebrities and I interviewed directors and writers and watched movies that I don't think I would have had access to uh, before that. You know, it just opened my world to... I don't want to say indie movies because they become so famous and mainstream after Sundance. But yeah, it was just different concepts of movies and ideas that maybe you wouldn't get normally if you just go to your regular cinema. Right, right. Um, let's talk about recent movies. What is your favorite movie as of recently? Uh, my favorite movie that I've seen recently? Oh, Wow within the past six years of doing YouTube. Oh, six years. Wow. <laughs> I don't know. My favorite movies in the past six years. Um, okay. I really like uh, Her. I think Her with Joaquin Phoenix was excellent. It was a movie that I was not planning on liking. I thought it, sometimes you just hear something you're like, okay, that's silly. And then I watched it and it just, I thought it was incredible and I still love it so much today. Um, what else? And that same sort of line, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind is one of my favorite mm. movies. Cool. Um, yeah, those two for now, I think, have been some of my favorite yeah. movies. Who are your favorite actors and actresses? <sighs> Look, I'm going to say Tom Hardy, and you're all going to think that it's because he looks the way Tom Hardy looks. And you would be right, but I think Tom Hardy is an excellent actor as well. Um, I saw him for the first time in a mini series. What was it called? I need to look that up. He did a mini series way before he was famous. Um, and I, I thought it was really good. It was about like English mafias and mobsters. And then I saw him in Bronson and then Inception and he's, and then Peaky Blinders. And I just think he has such an incredible range. And I am a little sad that 
American audiences maybe haven't seen that so much yet because he hasn't been like I don't know. I don't think he's been like his to his full capacity in like his American movies, but I think he's incredible. And that same line, Killian Murphy from Peaky Blinders is an excellent actor. And um, Francis McDormand, anything that Francis McDormand does, is oh. just excellent. Well, that's good. That's good. Yeah. No. Yeah. Well, I mentioned that because uh, Mad Max Fury Road was like amazing. <laughs> it's incredible I, that I, movie yeah my god i was my my most blown to bits yeah i watched that movie in theaters and i was in Same. the i was borderline on a panic attack when the whole scene was happening when they were like racing and they went into that sandstorm i was like what is going on what is this movie <laughs> yep. and then i kind of like come like calm down for a little bit i was like oh thank god <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, I love it. It's really great. It, it's great. That's why I love Tom Hardy for that. Um, yeah. Okay. Theater experiences. Let's talk about the theater experience a little bit. What was the <laughs> best theater experience you've had with watching a movie? With watching a movie, best theater experience? God, that's interesting. I don't know. Because it depends. Is it because it moved you? Is it because the effects were so good you couldn't even believe it? Um, is it because you were sobbing on your own? You know, there's so many reasons for mm -hmm. a theater experience to be good. Mm -hmm. With your experience. With your, that the audience with you was like really like going for it, watching the movie, you know, or just, yeah, yeah just what the movie affected you in a certain way. I am thinking. I think definitely Mad Max has to be up there because, right, you have to see that movie on the right. big screen. Oh, yeah, for Ooh, sure. You know which movie? And, and I did not expect um, Les Miserables. Oh, my God. I just said it horribly. Please excuse me, anyone who speaks French. Um, I That movie I did not expect. I had never heard the musical before. I knew the story. Um, I had seen the previous one with – who was it? Who played Jean Valjean with uh, – I think it was Liam Neeson. Was it Liam Neeson? Yeah, he did a, one of those versions. But I had never seen the musical. I've never heard the music. So I watched it in this giant screen. And I saw Hugh Jackman and Anne Hathaway just crying their eyes out and singing at full volume. And I just, I don't know, my heart wanted to burst. That movie, like, really impressed me the first time I saw it. And I loved it from beginning to end. Yeah, same. I saw that with a group of friends. And that just... It got me really emotional, like turn yes. when characters died. And I was like, "What is going on?" And I like I never heard the musical either. And it's just like, it's a powerful piece of like music. And yes, I mean, I do have some flaws with the film too. Of course, that's it's not. We're not saying it's a perfect movie. It's Let's, not. It's fine. <laughs> it's not because. Uh, Russell Crowe, like, why Russell oh, Crowe? Oh, <laughs> yeah, let's not... You know, to this day, I think about Russell Crowe singing at least twice a year. And and I don't understand technically why it's wrong, because he's in key, he's singing fine. But in my heart, I know it's wrong, and I don't know why. Something just sounds off, and I can't explain it. I and know. I feel really bad for him. I don't know. Um... Streaming services. Let's talk about streaming services. Which, okay. what are the go-to streaming services do you have to watch? Okay, so me and my family, as I'm sure pretty much all families and friends, have this little network where everyone gets a streaming service and we share it. I pay for Netflix and have like six people watching Netflix, so that one's mine. And I guess it's the go-to, right? You, Netflix is like the mm -hmm. first one you try and open. I have Netflix, Hulu. Recently got stars because I'm watching Outlander mm. and I can't find it anywhere else. And uh, HBO just of last week because, you know, Game of Thrones is uh, on. So we got that. Of course. Of course. Um, Netflix is like the first one I've gotten. Yes. Um, I, I, I was like one of the people that actually started out with DVDs. Remember the DVDs on Netflix? Me too. Yeah. I used to get like get them in the mail and watch them, return them. Oh. That was so exciting. I had to stop because because I was in Puerto Rico, it would take forever. So uh, it wasn't really worth it. But when I moved to Miami for my master's, I think they literally just started the streaming service. And I was like, yes, this is amazing. <laughs> uh, yes. And I never went back. Yeah. Um, 
I then I got Prime Video. Amazon Prime is actually oh, yeah, of course. Amazon Prime's pretty decent with their uh, content and movies. Their movie selection is actually very interesting. Actually, one of the mm-hmm. weird catalogs out there, I would say. You can like search for like these deep, uh, deep cuts and like very weird movies. That's true. <laughs> um, Hulu, I just got recently. I think it, that's something. Um, so there's another streaming service that's actually going to come out this year. What do you think about Disney Plus? Okay, I I don't know all the details yet. So Disney is going to basically collect everything that's theirs and have it in their streaming service, and it's not going to be anywhere else. So, okay, let me give you the deets on what is happening. Okay. Um, they will have all their movies, um, their animated films, their live-action films, the Marvel, the Star Wars... And they'll produce new original content for that right. service. Okay. Of course. So it's going to be November 12th, uh, 699 uh, to start. And they'll have 13 Disney films to start with because their Netflix deal's not up yet. So once the Netflix right, yeah. deal's up, they'll have the rest of the movies come in. Um, on the first day, they also announced that The Simpsons are going to be on there all three seasons to watch. Oh, okay. <laughs> but they'll uh, they'll have the Star Wars films, the Marvels movies, and the shows. They announced a bunch of Marvel shows, the Star Wars shows. It's just going to have all everything Disney on their platform. Right. So... So after they premiere, you're not going to see anything Disney on... Netflix or I think I don't know if Hulu has that deal still I, they're kind of connected in a way I don't know if they're going to th- I did hear that yeah they're going to remain connected in some way yeah some way uh, with producing content in that way but I don't think there's mm-hmm. going to be anything Disney related outside of that but Disney Plus is just going to be this massive uh, source of everything Disney for you mm-hmm. so I mean I'm on like a draw because it's just like it's like, do I want to add another streaming service to my... <laughs> yeah. It's like, sure, it's a cheap price. I mean, six ninety nine, you know, otherwise, or six sixty nine ninety nine a year, which is not bad. So mm-hmm. it's just, oh, I'm on, on the fence on that, so... I think everybody feels the same way because it's starting to get somewhat ridiculous that it's becoming so exclusive, so... Um, Netflix is really focusing on their original content mm-hmm. and it used to be it used to be well we can watch movies for a very low price and it's still great I mean the amount of content you get for the price you pay is great but now everyone wants a slice of that pie and it's going to be like you said we have so many subscriptions and you sum it all up it's what's the difference between that and paying for cable TV you know and yeah it's I don't know I'm, I I don't think it's a bad price considering that Netflix is now what thirteen dollars and they keep like canceling shows that we love. So oh, yeah, I think exactly. a lot of people <laughs> I think a lot of people will definitely go for it. I mean the idea that you don't watch a single Disney movie, yeah, that's not gonna fly. You're gonna wanna get that. I I don't know where it's taking us though. I don't know where streaming platforms right. the future of it is going or what it means for us as customers. I'm I don't love that. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Exactly. Let's get into the collaborations you've had on your channel. Oh, there are not many though. <laughs> there is there are far if you look on the channel there's there's a few, but uh Right. But that gets into like how did you end up collaborating with uh people such as like Roll Credits or Nick and Nax, you know? Yeah. They're they're just wonderful girls, you know, they're wonderful people and I I like their content before um, we ever spoke. So I, I was just fans of their content. And then I don't remember how we all ended up making a group, um, A to C, Mariana, uh, Roll Credits, Nick and Nax, and Rihanna Toria. And there was someone else. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to forget you, whoever you are. I'm sorry. Mm. Uh, and we, we just kind of talked about movies and we started a Facebook group called Cinebrew. And we were supposed to watch movies every month, but then everybody had different schedules. We were in different parts of the world. And it just, we, we were never fully in sync. But yeah, we just, you just have same like interests in common and you start talking and then you're like, hey, let's, let's talk about movies together in our channels. And that's pretty much how it went. 
Yeah, that's uh, that was pretty cool. I mean, it was kind of different with the collabs too, because it would be uh, one video on one channel and then the, another video on the other channel, so it's kind of like split right. between two people. So right at that point, I didn't really know how we could do it, and that's the only thing that sucks when you're the people who have the same interests as you're in different parts of the world. It's like, oh, we can't go to someone's house and just film this. So how do we do it? And back then, that was kind of the way. And uh, yeah, if I were to do a collab now, it would probably be a bit more high tech. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Just a bit. Just a bit. So, we let's talk about the year 2017 mm -hmm. with a film that came out and blew up the world. It. Yes. Oh, yes. So you made a video uh, figuring out what was the best Pennywise. Right. And... By far, it is your most viewed video on your channel. With by far. By far. By <laughs> far. With 6.5 <laughs> million views. Yeah. Were you expecting that much views on that little video? Okay. Listen. So, <laughs> I don't know. The answer is no. No way. No freaking way. So I watched this movie. This was an interesting, it's kind of an interesting story because I watched that movie and I had recently watched the original one because I I was always very afraid of that movie. I remember seeing clips of it as a kid and I was terrified of Pennywise. So for years I've like amped it up and thought it was like the scariest thing ever. And then I saw it and it was kind of funny and kind of goofy in some ways. Uh, still scary, but not as bad as I thought. So I was like, okay, maybe I can handle this new It movie. So that's when I went to see it and absolutely loved it. I thought it was such a cool take on this character and a character that everyone loves so much because it's Tim Curry. So I decided, you know what, maybe I can compare the two. As opposed to comparing the movies, I'm going to compare the characters, you know, because obviously it's not fair. This movie was like high production. It was completely different um, take to that mini. It's not a mini series, but I guess they, they do call it a mini series. Um, so I was like, okay, let's compare the actors and the characters. And I thought it was a solid idea. I thought it was a good analysis. I thought I would do pretty well. Then in Puerto Rico, the hurricane Maria happened and I didn't have electricity for months. And then one day I was able to go. So I had already posted the video. I had no way to check on it. I was like, okay, that video is out there. No idea what's going on. And then one day at my brother's apartment, he finally got power electricity. And I went there. I was like, oh, let me check my stuff. And when I checked, I had 50,000 views, which just then blew my mind. I had never had a video that would have 50,000 views. I had no idea what was going on. It was still going. The comments were still going. And, and yeah, it just continued to happen. To this day, I get comments on that video, people literally voting. They're like, no, Tim Curry's the best. And no, Alexander Skarsgård is the man. So I still get <laughs> opinions and votes on that video, which is really funny that people were so passionate about who's better, you know? Yeah, it's uh, it's just little surprises. Yeah, with the videos. Um, dear God, do you have Prince Albert in a con? You do. You better let him out. <laughs> what hat? What hat? What hat? <laughs> um, oh man, Tim Curry's the best. He is the God best. Bless him. Um, what kind of videos? Actually, wait. What was your favorite video you ever worked on in your channel? Um, I really like, I tried to start a series called uh, the directors, oh, I don't remember the name, or like uh, directors in movies or something like that. And I want to, I still want to keep doing it. And uh, it's like taking a director and discussing how they make movies, you know, the themes that they gravitate towards, um, the characters, their style. And I did a video of uh, Miyazaki and all the Studio Ghibli movies. And I was really proud of that video. I thought it was a really good analysis. I thought it was nice to look at because it's, it's everything, you know, his animation, it's all that. So I was really proud of that video. But about, was it a year ago? Two years ago, I don't remember. I think it's a year ago. I did a more funny style kind of video, which is not very like me. Uh, and it's my reaction to Avengers, uh, the Infinity Wars. Uh, Infinity War, sorry, not the Infinity Wars. And uh, I'm I've, I'm a DC, a DC fan, and I've always been. And like oh. I told you, I always like, uh, sometimes I have to retract and uh, change my opinion about something I said. So I've been like 
upset at Marvel for a long time because they're killing it and there's nothing I can say about DC. It's just like, we're trying and they're still trying, but it's not working. And I was really upset that it took so long for Thanos to show up, for this movie to show up. And I was sure it was going to be very whatever. And then I saw it and it blew my mind how good it was, how well they added all these stories. Like these are so many movies that you have to add to one go, to to one storyline, make it work, make it cohesive. And they did it. And I was just so mad that I was so in love with this movie. And so my review was me being very angry talking about how I love this movie and how there's nothing to say. It's just a great movie. So yeah, I'm really mad in the video. And some people thought I was like genuinely mad. They didn't get that I was trying to be funny. So that's always funny to read the comments. Uh, so the first off, it was director's trademarks. They've okay. Done. That was the, what, what, it, what it's called. And um, uh, let's see here. Avengers Infinity War review by a DC Comics fan. I believe yes. the one. Yep. Yeah, so... <laughs> Um, yeah, those are very decent videos. If you can make another director's trademark, which director would you focus on? Um, let's see. I think I wanted to do Wes Anderson after that because he's so unique and so different. It's kind of hard to pin down. I don't know. It's, it's just odd. Wes Anderson is such an odd man and such an odd storyteller. But people love him. And it's not, I think you're either... Or hate him, but if you do, you love Wes Anderson. So I was very interested in what made him so great. You know, I mean, yes, you can tell by a long shot and from far away what his movies look like. It's like, oh yeah, that's a. It's almost like a painting. You go like, yeah, that's a Wes Anderson movie for sure, no question about it. But I wanted to know what was it about his storytelling because I do believe he writes most of his stuff as well, right? Am I wrong about that? Yes, I think he has written most of his movies. If, right. If memory spares me i'm gonna double check though i think yeah that's i know case. not all of them because fantastic mr fox is a is a right. role doll yeah I, yeah that's right so yes. not so, all of them but in yeah. general he is known to write and direct his movies so i wanted mm-hmm. to know what was it about his style and because his actors as well he, they're kind of very monotone and you kind of want to say emotionless but it's not true because they feel things and they go through different struggles but it's such a unique way of showing people that I wanted to know what was it about it that people love so much. So that was going to be my next one. I might still do it, actually. Yeah, I am a, actually, I am a huge fan of Wes Anderson myself, actually. There you go. <laughs> so it's like, I think, honestly, I think there's only one film I have yet to see of him, um, which I need to watch as soon as possible. Uh it, it seems like there's there's like a gap in years for me because I think 2014 for me was just like a gap where I did not watch a lot of movies. So the Grand mm-hmm. Budapest Hotel was like the one I missed out on. You haven't seen it yet? I still haven't seen Grand Budapest Hotel. Interesting. I've seen everything else, but that's the one I just like escapes me. It's like I got to get to it. It's running that away That would be me. interesting because I've heard a lot of Wes Anderson fans call it like his commercial movie, which always happens, you know, when they get nominated. People are like, oh, that's your commercial movie. <laughs> so and I guess maybe it's because it was so broadly liked that people felt it wasn't so him. I still think it's very much him. Um, but I'm not I'm not such a big fan that I can tell you whether it's not as good or not. I enjoyed it. I thought it was good. Yeah, OK. Yeah, there's the, like there's like a couple of his films that I just did not care for um, <laughs> which which ones are those uh the darjeeling limited that, i love that movie it didn't grasp me as much <laughs> it's just like oh um no the um the short film leading up to the movie is better in my opinion um with natalie portman playing um the girlfriend um, right she gets mentioned in the movie the, throughout the whole thing with jason schwartzman um, yes so that, I, I was like, watch, because I think I watched it after the movie. And I was like, wait a minute, why is this so much better than the actual movie? <laughs> it was so weird. Um, um, Bottle Rocket, the short film is better than the actual film, in okay, my opinion. I haven't seen that. His, his directorial debut, it's, uh, it's like if you watch the short film first, then mm-hmm. watch the adaptation to full length. It's there's a difference, but I mean, Rushmore also Rush, Rushmore is another one. I it's okay. I felt that about Rushmore, yeah. 
it's okay. My favorite by far, there's actually two of them that are my favorite. There's, well, Mr. Fantastic Mr. Fox is great. Mm-hmm. Uh, Isle of Dogs from last year, that was amazing. I'm missing that one. I have to see it. Oh, my God. <laughs> I know. It is, it is like, it, it's an original idea, too. It's like nothing, it's not based on anything. It is like mm-hmm. the animation still top notch, too. Oh, oh, my God. It's amazing. Oh my god. Uh I did not mean to go down that trap hole. Uh Wes Anderson. <laughs> That's fine. Um But yeah, I mean there's a lot of directors I like in general, so I mean I can gush about anybody and anywhere. Mm. Um what is your re- relationship with horror movies? Oh, okay. So that's been like a growing evolving relationship actually now that I think about it. I used to hate them. And it's funny, my boyfriend is a huge horror movie fan, and which I make fun of because he hates every horror movie he sees nowadays. And I'm like, well, are you a fan or not? You have to make up your mind. And he's like, I am. It's just that they're not putting effort into them. So I was like, okay, whatever you say. And for years, I told him that I didn't like horror movies, and it was true. But then when he asked me, have you seen this? Have you seen that? I had seen all of it. Like, by the time I was 16, I had seen The Shining, The Ring, Mothman Prophecies, and... Um, what was the other one? There was another huge one around those years. I don't remember. But funnily enough, I don't know what happened. I saw Mothman Prophecies at a young age, and it scarred me, the idea that this thing actually existed. Because they always end it with like, oh, based on true events, and this thing really happened. And I was like, hold on, is this real? Like, are these things that happen? And it didn't occur to me that it can or cannot be real, and people might be making stuff up. So that was huge for me. And it traumatized me for a long time. So after that, I decided not to watch horror movies for a long time. But recently, and I think it might have started with watching it, I was like, oh, this isn't so bad. Um, I'm a grown-up now. Like, this isn't so bad. So I've watched a few um, recently in the past few years that I've really enjoyed. And, And I think it's a genre, sadly, that can get very stuck with a lot of tropes. And I hate when you don't, there's so many things that you can find scary. So I kind of hate when it's like, oh, we moved into a house and it's a scary house and it doesn't occur to us to move away. And and that's done. You know, we should do something different. But um, let's see. Recently, I saw Hereditary and I, I lost my mind. I that was unexpected. And yeah, slowly but surely, I'm getting more into the genre. I'm really enjoying it. Ah, What's your favorite horror film? I think The Shining still is one of my favorite ones. It's it's so epic and it still scares me. That score is chilling. Every time I hear it, I I want to die a little bit. It's it's horrible. It, it terrifies me. Um, it's very different from the book. If you've read it, it's right. they're very they're very different. But I think it's a great take on what a haunted hotel could be like. And and yeah, it's it was terrifying. I still love it a lot. Yeah, that's that's Kubrick for you. He uh, when he adapts yes. when he adapts something into film, he he'll kind of go by the source material. Um, the Shining, yeah, that's a big departure from the novel, and that's why Stephen King didn't really like it. Yeah, um, that's yeah, why. Yeah, they're very different. He eventually actually made his own version with his own miniseries of The Shining uh, later on. Oh, he did. I didn't know that. Yeah, you can. Oh, when was that? You. You can, yeah, that was, um, I can't remember when that was, but yeah, he actually directed his own version of The Shining for, uh, 97, it was a miniseries. Okay. Imagine how mad you gotta be that you go and do your own movie, cause you were so mad uh, that they didn't do it right. Yeah, he wrote, uh, the miniseries, he didn't direct it though, but it was like three episodes mm. and it was in 97, so... But yeah, yeah the, oh, and they're so different. Um, but going back to Kubrick for a sec, the best way, like, The Shining isn't the, like, the book and novel are different, but when he did the Clockwork Orange, however, right, that adaptation is spot on. That is word for word like the book. Yeah, I'm be- I've been meaning to read the book, and I also hear it, but I also hear the endings are different, though. Yes, they are. And that's okay, the, that's yeah. The, that's the only difference because... I, uh, in the book, um, uh, I think, like, the book omitted the last chapter in, like, yes. some, some releases, and that's why Kubrick didn't adapt it, because he didn't see that ending. 
And so when it was re-released, they added on the original ending to the book, and that's why there's a difference. And it's like, it's fine. I mean, the endings are going to be different, but otherwise it is like word for word the same. And it's going to be tricky to read because it's in that, um, uh, that Russian Slavic, like rhyming slang. So it's going to be hard Mm, to, it is like, it's not in like in plain English. It's like very different when you try to read it. And that's why I recommend, uh, audiobooks for that. Uh, it's always a great way (laughs) to, uh, listen to your books. Yeah. Uh, so let's dive into podcasting. You've done some Ooh. podcasting. Yes, I have. What is part-time characters? Well, or what was part-time, part-time it characters? Was, yeah, <laughs> past tense. Part-time characters was uh, a movie podcast, and what I used to say it's a podcast where we talk about movies as if we were part-time employees at a video store. So it, the the idea was that we were all friends who worked at a video store. Uh, back when there were video stores and we would just talk about the movies we liked you know what came out you know what we recommend so we had different segments if there was a big movie we would talk about that we would also do sort of like recommendations for each other so if so and so hadn't seen i don't know space odyssey and you're like oh my god you have to see space odyssey so in the next episode that person would watch it and we would discuss it we can see if they liked it or not so yeah, it was a way of talking about classic movies and new movies and getting like an audience that wanted to talk about it. It was really fun. Ah, uh, okay. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I've I've been podcasting pretty much a whole lot. So I'm in the world of podcasting. I know experience. Nice. Uh, so, and I really would appreciate recommending podcasts to people. So, and even though part-time characters is not still going on, I will recommend you guys to go and check it out because it is a really good podcast. Oh, thank you. That's really nice to hear. Um, so you've been on hiatus for a while and you recently oh, uploaded yeah. a new video. Um, <laughs> so do you have any like future plans for your channel with videos uh, and content? Yeah. I, I've always enjoyed making videos and I want to keep doing it. Um, but sometimes when you take a moment and stop, you're like, what exactly do I want to do? And at this point, I'm not sure. I know I want to talk about movies, but I don't necessarily want to bring in just a movie review because I don't know. Um, I don't know how people feel about just a movie review. You know, I really always like talking for a very long time about different things we found in it or, you know, like character analysis and just getting deep inside a movie. And but that's also like longer videos. So I don't know if people enjoy that or not. I think I'm going to play around with it for a little while and see what I like to do. So that's one of the reasons I stopped. It's because I was trying to do everything at once. I was trying to run a podcast. I was trying to focus on writing. I was trying to make videos. And when you do it all at once, you don't do it well. Mm. So I was like, okay, let's take a minute and stop. It's not worth the stress right now. And so I'm slowly trying to come back and see, you know, what people would like and what people would want to watch. Definitely related to movies. I just need to try and find the angle now and see what it is. That's really cool because I wanted to highlight you as a great content creator because sometimes these channels get lost in the shuffle, and especially with YouTube and all that drama going on with yeah, YouTube. Yeah, you know, it's it's gotten crazy, so, which doesn't help at all. So uh, I want to go back to franchise talk because you're a DC fan. <laughs> Uh, how yes. I, I know you did the video about infinity war so what are you excited for endgame coming up i this am year? i am very excited for endgame uh, i was actually gonna go see captain marvel tonight because i i know that's a big piece and we need to watch uh, that so cool. i want to be ready cool, cool. Uh, i am very excited i am not so excited about what comes after because it's first of all it's called endgame this should be an end right um i fear that it's not so i don't know what that's gonna i don't know what that means you know um i'm assuming the universe uh story will continue on because we have guardians coming up and we have i think there's a black panther coming up as well right at some point at some point yes yeah so i don't know what that means in general marvel is not gonna stop come on let's be real about it So, but I don't know if it's like a different chapter. Is it a different book of the same characters? I'm not sure what's going to happen. I am excited for this movie. 
Um, but I sometimes things, I feel sometimes like things need to end because if you just keep going, maybe you just ruin it. So I don't right. know what they have plans. They've been doing well, so I I I have faith in them. I, I they have a plan that's very clear. Um, but I don't know if the plan ends here and then it's just going to be crazy. We we'll find out, I guess. Uh, what is your favorite Marvel film? My favorite Marvel film, I think. Um, God, there's so many. I really liked Civil War. No, sorry, not Civil War. Winter Soldier. I really enjoyed yeah. that because for the longest time, I thought Captain America was just such a goody two shoes and i was just like whatever mm -hmm. it's not that great but i really enjoyed that movie and it just kind of showed the corruption from within and how you when you trust the people when you think you're doing good and trust the people you believe are good and then that doesn't work out like what do you do you know what morals do you have and i thought that was very deep for marvel you know for so long i thought it was just kind of funny and this marvel humor is so kind of universal now it's spreading everywhere to every movie but this was like oh this is a very interesting concept i like this so I did like that, and I liked Guardians of the Galaxy, mm -hmm. the first one, um, because it felt really fun. It felt, first of all, it was sort of low risk. I don't think there were so many Guardians of the Galaxy fans out there. But then suddenly you had this huge fan base of these like weird characters mm -hmm. that shouldn't be together, but they are. And I really enjoyed that concept. I thought that was very cool. Yeah, I agree. I that those were both from 2014, so that was a very good year for there Marvel. You go. Yeah, it was. Uh, true. Yeah, people were like Guardians of the Galaxy was very much a property that nobody knew about. Like very new, very little people knew about, it, and then it exploded. And then Winter Soldier. Yeah, I, I honestly, it is my favorite, and I think it is still the best Marvel movie so yeah, far. It's excellent. Um, looking at the slate for upcoming Marvel movies. Uh, there's, I th think I counted what, like one, two, three, four sequels, which is Guard Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, the Black Panther sequel, the Doctor Strange sequel, mm -hmm. and uh, Spider-Man Far From Home. Right. So, and then they have Black Widow they're working on. Yes, I remember fin that. Finally, she gets a movie after all these years. Yeah, it's been too long. Um... Uh, there was a movie called the, the Internals, which I have no idea what that is. It's going to be interesting to see what that would be. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, and, and then they mention about, I guess Blade at some point is going to come. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some talk about Blade in the future. And then the other one was. Uh, Shang Chi, which is the first Chinese. Uh, yes, I heard that. True. So I, I'm kind of curious how the future goes for after Endgame, but um, I mean, it's a three-hour movie, though. Oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> it's I gonna mean, be interesting. There's a lot to get through. Yeah, there's a lot to resolve. So we will see what happens. So, as a DC fan, what DC films do you enjoy? Ugh. This is hard because are we talking about the DCU or just anything with a DC character? I'm I'm opening it up to anything DC thus far. Doesn't matter. Past, present, upcoming. God. Let's see. I mean, I'm going to be really boring and talk about um, the Dark Knight trilogy cuz I mean, it's I think it's pretty untouchable. <laughs> And I think that might be one of the reasons why DC fans are so upset. It's because we had this and now it's like, oh, what is all this other crap that you're doing? You know, <laughs> it's really difficult to follow. Um, uh, so, yeah, I think the Dark Knight trilogy, I weirdly love Watchmen. I think Watchmen is really cool. And um, it's, again, not a perfect movie, but I really enjoyed it. And uh, recent stuff, recent stuff, I think Wonder Woman has been their saving grace because oh yeah, there's not much else to say. She carried that. And yeah, Aquaman was just, no, I, I can't. It oh. was okay. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Um, i trying to think. Yeah, Batman is one of their big properties. I mean, the Dark Knight trilogy oh. is top notch. I mean, Christopher Nolan is, whew. Hot, yeah. Very, very hot director. Um, good, 
material to work with. Um, have you seen Shazam yet? I have not. And I'm very conflicted because I never knew anything about Shazam. And then I saw the trailers and it looks so silly. Not I, I get what it's about. And it's a kid and maybe they're going to take it like lightly. Uh, the story, nothing too serious. But I couldn't get over his costume. It just looks so fake. And so <laughs> like his shoulders are like clearly made out of foam, that's, right? That, that's, that's not a man's deltoids. <laughs> What's going on? That's... That's how the character design is. I, I imagine. I was like, okay, they're not going to go crazy. But I, I mean, yeah, that's... so, and I get it. It's supposed to be a kid who's a superhero. So I get it that it can be a lot more goofy, but I've heard it's actually good. Have you seen it? I have not yet. Um, okay. And that's kind of curious because, mind you, Shazam was originally Captain Marvel. And it's, look at the history between Shazam and Captain Marvel because those two are kind of intertwined because okay. of the history between DC Comics and Marvel because the name rights. Mm -hmm. So that's why it was interesting to see both of them come out during the same year because they're basically almost the same. Yeah, I keep hearing uh, the jokes every now and then. Yeah, but uh, no, I feel like Shazam would be a really uh, good movie to watch for a DC fan. I mean, so. I, th I think so. I think, I think the problem as well has been... I don't think they've found a tone, and they keep trying to make a universe, and it doesn't work. So, Yeah, they've tried to do that universe thing, but I think now yeah. they've said they are slowing down on the universe sharing films and focusing on solos more. They should. They really should. Um, that happened with Aquaman, and Aquaman became a huge success at the box office, and uh, but they're taking so long to make a sequel, too. I think the sequel's yeah, supposed listen. to come in, like, 2021. I'm, like, thinking, what the hell are you guys doing? It's not that long. Two years is not that bad, I don't think. I mean, depends what you bring in those two years, of course, so people don't forget. But two well, years is not terrible. Okay. I'm amazed that Aquaman did so well. I, I don't... Like, honest... Well, you should never underestimate the power of Jason Momoa. Like, that man oh, yeah. just oozes charm in everything he does. But in terms of a movie, let's be real, it's not that good, is it? The story was okay. Like, it was every movie in one movie. Yeah. Uh, are you excited to see Joaquin Phoenix as the Joker? <sighs> listen, okay, listen. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, I'm excited. I love Joaquin Phoenix. I, I think he's an incredible actor, and I, I trust him in this. I... I'm not a huge fan of having like origin stories for every character. Like we know who the Joker is and that was enough. I don't understand why we have to go to the beginning of everything every time. But it's separate. It's it's Todd Phillips, right? Am I wrong yes, on that? Yes, you, you are okay. correct. So that would be very interesting. I haven't seen Todd Phillips do something like this and what I assume will be kind of serious. Um I'm excited to see him as the Joker. I'm not sure what the movie's going to bring. So, again, we will see. Interesting indeed. Uh, let's end it off with talking about Star Wars. Oh, boy. <laughs> Your relationship with Star Wars. <laughs> um, especially with uh, Star Wars Celebration just happened last week. So a lot of things happened. A lot of things were announced and showed. And... Uh, and I even noticed the uh, solo podcast from Part-Time Characters. So I might have to listen to that later, actually. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> um, but so what is your relationship with Star Wars? Um, I think my relationship with Star Wars is like a lot of people's relationship with Star Wars. So it's like a relationship that was really good. And then it just went south for no reason, but they keep gaslighting you to think the relationship is good. And you still remember that it was good, so you stick around to make it work, but it's not working. It's, it's something like that. It's a dysfunctional relationship is what it is. <laughs> um, um. Yeah, I look, I am a fan of Star Wars, but I don't I wouldn't consider myself hardcore. Uh, right. And even oh, and yeah. I. And, like, I don't know the name of the planets. I definitely would not be able to tell you all the details. But I think I know enough. And even I'm angry. So I can't even imagine what, like, hardcore fans feel like. But it's just it's just become a joke, I think. It's just become a product that you bring out every year. 
and they're beating it to the ground and they don't care because you regard people are going to go and see it. They know they're going to break box office records regardless. They know they're going to sell. I don't know how much merchandise, you know, so it doesn't matter really. They're just, I don't know what they're doing at this point. Really? Is it a case of fatigue of the franchise? You know, I think it's an interesting universe. And when they started doing the anthology movies like Rogue One, I was like, oh, this is interesting. Mm Because there's things you really don't know about the universe. And it would be cool to see. I never thought about it in a perspective of, like, normal human beings fighting the war. That was interesting. Um, But again, talking about origins, I don't need to know where Solo came from. I thought I was stupid. And they didn't do it justice, in my opinion. (laughs) I didn't. I didn't need to know that Solo had some love interest before Leia. Like, it's okay. It's not important. You know, it doesn't add anything for me. But in terms of the actual, like, canon and the this trilogy now, I, I have found it very upsetting because I think it's very clear they're following uh, a parallel story to the original ones. But it's not where... It's like when you decide to make a remake and you, like go through the beats of certain things like, oh, now we need to have a chase scene and now we need to have a big reveal scene and now we need to have a twist. But you have no idea why those things worked in the original ones. I feel like that's what they're doing. They're bringing in elements that they knew were interesting. They knew they the elevated the trilogy, but they don't understand why it happened. So for you to, I don't know, kill the Sith Lord or whatever in the middle of The Last Jedi doesn't bring anything to me. You killing off, sorry if you haven't seen it, killing off uh, Luke Skywalker for no reason because it's exciting and different brings nothing to me. So I don't feel like they have a good story and I was willing to give them the benefit of the doubt with The Last Jedi. But what I've heard in the third, I'm like, oh, what is even happening now? What have you seen the teaser trailer for episode nine? I haven't seen it. The only thing I heard is that the Emperor is somewhere around. Is that a thing? <laughs> okay. How, how do you feel about that? <laughs> I, I don't want to spoil it if you have not seen the teaser trailer. And, okay. And it doesn't bother me. You can tell me. I mean, it. the title is interesting. Um, mm-hmm. I will mention that it, the title of Nine is The Rise of Skywalker. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I don't know what they're indicating there because they did, quote, kill off Luke in Less Jedi in a way. Mm-hmm. So I don't know who the Skywalker is in this thing. It could be Kylo in this situation because he is right. technically a Skywalker in this sense. Um, it could hint at Daisy being a Skywalker in some shape or form, but I highly right. doubt that because we don't know yeah. the parents' origins. Um, but yeah, you see everyone in the film everyone's coming together as a group on this adventure and uh yes the emperor is teased at at the very end of the teaser Mm -hmm. so it's like think about where has he been for the past 30 plus years now i find that upsetting i how do you feel about that (laughs) it's because after snoke i mean snoke was like very odd for Mm -hmm. me it was very weak as a villain in my opinion in comparison to, you know, the Emperor. So, uh, I don't know. I'm kind of curious where they go with Palpatine in this new film. Um, yeah. I just, doesn't it feel to you a little like, oh, this didn't work. Let's just shove this in to see if people <laughs> feel excited again. That's what it feels like to me. Because originally, I think their biggest mistake, there's a lot of mistakes, but I think their biggest mistake is that they haven't had a good representation of the dark side because um kylo is supposed to be somewhere in between at this point you know we're Mm -hmm. constantly we're constantly discussing that there's still good in him and we can change him so he's like at the first he was very interesting but now he's just like he doesn't really know even himself you know it seems like he does but we're we're debating that all the time so there's no like really dark evil presence like we had with darth vader like we had with palpatine so I think this movie's really missing like that core badass villain and now you're just trying to like bring this in again where has he been for all this time like what excuse are you going to give me because I feel like that totally negates the ending of the first trilogy it's like we su- we were supposed to beat the dark side we did beat it so what's what's going on you know like I don't um, know Yeah, I'll we'll see how things go for it and 
And of course, I hear that after this, there's going to be 10 more years of Star Wars. So it's just like, I mean, yeah. there's other stories to tell in that universe. But I guess with this one, that is the end of the uh, the Skywalker saga. So it's just like, mm. think how they're putting the rest, all these old characters, and just introducing new characters. So um, Yeah, uh, that's that's fatigue if I've ever heard of it, you know? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of franchises and sequels and remakes, and it's there's a lot going on in this world of movies, and we just have to uh, cash in on the ones we like the most. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if it'll ever end. It's been a very, I mean, it has to. It, this hasn't really been that long, but it feels like it has, you know, the idea of franchise and remakes and bringing back whatever, the 80s and the 90s. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what comes after that, but I'm excited to break free from that and see. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, Maria, it's been great. It's been great Thank talking you. to you. And, it's been awesome. And people, please check out Maria. She is amazing. Check out her social, her YouTube channel. It's all a Cine Club channel. Please check her out. And uh, thanks for listening. And I'll see you guys on the next episode.